Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. I'm Dan Lemihu, County Board Chairman. I'm co-host of this show with Adam Payne, our Administrative Coordinator. And we bring this show to you monthly, trying to bring the services and uh, departments of Sheboygan County to our viewers so you have a better understanding of what Sheboygan County Government provides for you. This week, we have with us uh, Vern Gross, our Building Services Manager. Um, we have quite a few buildings that are quite obvious to the public in, in Sheboygan County. We've got the courthouse has been there for, for years, uh, the jail, the administration building recently built, our healthcare facilities, health and human services building. So we have a, a large number of buildings and, and a large responsibility. Vern, your department uh, has that responsibility, the building services department. So why don't we start today, Vern, just with a, just a few minutes, to give us a little background about yourself and, and how long you've been with Sheboygan County. Sure, Dan. Uh, I am originally a native of northern part of Wisconsin. I have a degree in engineering from the University of Wisconsin. And I spent some time in the steel mills and manufacturing in Chicago and Milwaukee. I started with the county of Sheboygan in 1987, and I've been here for, since that period in the same position. And then Fill us in a little bit about your department, the uh, Building Services Department, and what the uh, mission and primary responsibilities are for that department. Now, certainly, the Building Services Department um, has the responsibility for several buildings, as you mentioned, and it includes the courthouse, the law enforcement center, the new administration building, the human services building, the Baxter building, the new detention center, and Taylor Park. One of the things that uh, we've also provided to the county, hopefully, is to provide some technical help and experience and aid to some of the other county facilities, such as the nursing homes and the highway department and the university campus. Our primary purpose is to provide for the citizens of the Sheboygan County an efficient and effective areas and business opportunity, or places to conduct the business of the county so that the, well, the ability to provide that service be handled in an efficient manager and in an attractive surroundings for that business. And to accomplish this, this work, what, is, what size staff do you have? The staff we have in the building services department for those buildings I mentioned, we have 34 people and that's 14 maintenance workers who are on first and second shift. We also handle the janitorial duties for those facilities that I mentioned. There are 14 cleaners. Also have an assistant to my office. I have a superintendent of maintenance who has responsibility for the day-to-day -day maintenance in each of these buildings. And I have an electrician who is probably the a technician who helps all of the county departments and facilities, and a clerk. You, you mentioned maintenance, some of the, the electrical and, and engineering areas, janitorial. That doesn't include the janitorial serve work for all the buildings for the county, does it? We have janitorial service for those buildings that I mentioned that are underneath the courthouse maintenance group okay. as such, and that's the administration building, the, the human services building, the courthouse, the law enforcement center, and the detention center. And the health care centers? And, health care centers. Is, is and, and staff? Yeah, the health care centers are, have their own maintenance group under a supervisor of maintenance at each individual uh, health care center, Rocky Knoll, Sunny Ridge Comprehensive, and they have their own maintenance staff and cleaning staff. And the UW Center the same way? The UW Center is the same way. The UW has a maintenance supervisor. Uh, they have their own cleaning staff. And seeing we're talking about the UW Center, I know when I came on the county board 12, 13 years ago, I was quite surprised at the county's involvement with the UW Center. And probably many of the people that are watching this show are also surprised as to the county's involvement with the UW Center. Maybe you could expand on that a little bit? Sure. And you're right, there are probably many people within the county of Sheboygan don't realize the county's involvement with the UW system, particularly here at this campus. Uh, the campus was 
built on land that was actually donated and in effect by the Kohler Corporation and for that purpose, for education. Uh, the main office building, the main administration building here was constructed in the 1960s, middle 1960s, and since then it's expanded. Now the county of Sheboygan owns the facilities and the buildings are provided by the county. The university center system, which is a two-year campus, operates the academics and the, the functioning of it. <coughs> the county also has the responsibility to provide the facility for the educational purposes here, and that includes capital investment, um, replacing of some of the large units such as the air conditioning systems and so forth. One of the most recent projects that we had here was the new commons area. Remember that was a 1998 project that uh, provided for a better area for student gathering. It provided for some of the new informational technology classes that were being contemplated. It also provided new administrative area in the older building. Those types of capital projects are under the county's Aegeus of seeing that they're done and provided for the students. So the campus at this location since the late 60s, mm -hmm. so all the buildings that, that the people see out here now, we've, we've built those and maintained them? They have been constructed by the county, yes. And, and later in the show, I think we're going to talk a little bit about some of our future projects, and I think there's, there's, there's some, some uh, projects <coughs> for, for the campus so we can and leave that till later, but uh, I think I think it is a is a surprise to most people mm -hmm. as to the uh, county taxpayers' involvement with the uh, with, with the campus out here. And the county has a great investment and a lot of involvement with this campus. Yes. So, in addition to the upkeep and maintenance responsibilities, transitioning to the capital projects, I know there's a number of capital projects that you also take a leadership role in. Describe some of the the capital projects in the past that you've been involved with. Well, Sheboygan County has undertaken a, a large dedication towards providing uh, those facilities that are required with <coughs> modern day function of county government. And one of the uh, first projects that I was involved in was, of course, was the construction of the 93 building at Rocky Knoll. <coughs> Remember the original Rocky Knoll building was the old tuberculosis sanitarium that was antiquated. It did not suit itself to the care of the residents as their, uh, you know, as the modern conveniences were just not there. Uh, the building itself became pretty dilapidated, so the county board decided that it was time that we did something with that building instead of sinking more money into trying to keep it up to replace it, and we did. Uh, that was completed in 1993 uh, by actually the general contractor, one of our local contractors, uh, did a good job with it. And I think we've embellished the appearance and the function of that facility by quite a bit. Uh, following that, the uh, county determined that the existing law enforcement center you know, just was not adequate county was spending a lot of money transporting uh, inmates between jails wherever there was were jail spaces available and spending a lot of money on leasing or renting jail spaces for the county's inmates uh, <clears throat> several several studies were made as to you know what would be the best uh, alternative to pursue in trying to provide for that uh, probably an unfortunate comment on today's society, but we needed more jail space. And some land was purchased from the city on the south side of Sheboygan. Uh, that project started uh, with phase one where we were putting together a facility to house both work release prisoners, work release inmates, and secure. Uh, sort of in the middle of that project, it was determined that we just did not have enough space even with that new addition, so we added what was mounted to a phase two to it. 
So right now we have capability for 167 or so inmates at uh, the phase one facility and probably 120 or so secure on phase two. And that has worked out well. So that's another one of the projects. And then back in the, oh, the middle 1980s, it was determined that Sheboygan County needed a fifth courtroom. Um, Sheboygan County petitioned the state to provide that court but we didn't have a place for it. And we started a domino effect of providing a space in the top floor of the annex building, which coincidentally was constructed as a courtroom to start with. But over time, the, the clerk courts moved in there, the district attorney moved in there. So we went back to that concept of retaining that as a courtroom. So now we needed room for the district attorney. So he had to move somewhere else, it was determined to take the existing courthouse and provide the facility for the courts in that building and construct another building to take care of the administrative functions, which your offices, uh, the personnel department, the county clerk, the register of deeds, the planning department, finance department, those administration activities could be moved into a separate building, and it was. So now the courthouse is primarily court-related functions with a district attorney and a clerk of courts, and the administration building is the administrative function. And that was completed in 1999. So you mentioned the work at Rocky Knoll in 1993, um, the, the new detention center, the courthouse situation with uh, creating a new courthouse chambers, the administration building. And for our viewers, if you haven't been to the courthouse in the last year and a half or two years, uh, make a point to stop by. It's a beautiful <coughs> facility. The work uh, that was done has really improved the efficiency and the operations at the courthouse, the administration building. I know when it was first completed, we had a number of people going to the courthouse and then finding their way over to the administration building to pay taxes or go to the register of deeds. But in any regards, fine work there. Another area that you've started in the last year or so is the 800 megahertz system. I know that's a project you've been involved with, with some of the infrastructure and towers. Touch on that a little bit. The uh, Sheriff's Communications system uh, is not just the Sheriff's Department. The, the system provides communications between volunteer fire departments throughout the county, transportation sections, uh, public works departments, and the other villages such as Plymouth and Elkhart Lake and so forth. And what has happened to communications in the 20th century, 21st century now, uh, is that the volume of traffic over communication system has become so intense that the bandwidth available for these had, had shrunk and they just didn't have enough ability to put channels out. So the Sheriff's Department is going to what is called an 800 megahertz system, which allows more channels and marrying that with the city of Sheboygan to you know, assist them and to integrate the communications and dispatch between the two, two departments. But that required different tower siting locations than we had. So right now with this system that is up and running, uh, there are a few things that have to be added to it or completed in it, but primarily the dispatch system is functioning. Uh, we have six tower sites, where before we had four. Uh, we had to construct new towers at Comprehensive Health Care Center in Waldo, at Rocky Knoll in Plymouth. Uh, we stiffened up the tower that we have at uh, Taylor Hill, and we leased a tower from a and and we have tower sites in Elkhart and uh, Highway 67. And that's been a massive project that is just coming into completion and it looks like it's functioning very well. So if our viewers didn't have a fla flavor for it when we first started this program, uh, building services is not exclusively maintenance and upkeep. The number of projects that you've worked on in the past, just since 1987, uh, there's been some real significant infrastructure improvements made in the county. Now tell us a little bit about what you're presently working on. <laughs> well, and, and you're right, Adam, the, the county has developed a lot of resource to providing modern places for its business function and to serve the public. 
And one of the things that has been a concept within the county for several years, of course, is what do we do with Comprehensive Health Care Center? Uh, it was at one time the model of a county farm. The, it was structurally sound, it was a good building, but the layout of the building and the ability to care for that population that was were residents there were becoming less and less efficient. Uh, some of the mechanical problems we have in the building come with the building's age. It's not easy to keep the building up. And then there were a couple of things that were happening as to you know, what was the county's role in caring for this type of person. So there were many meetings, many discussions. We had input from several consultants to determine the demographics of the people that we were trying to care for and what would be the best way to do so. And we also changed administrators a couple of times, but with the advent of Mr. Larrabee uh, and his work in developing what is now the current plan is to provide for that population that currently at Comprehensive at Rocky Knoll, another addition to the Rocky Knoll campus. And right now we are currently under that construction. There will be a 37 bed addition for the ICMFR group at Rocky Knoll, which is new construction. Be the foundations are up, the walls are up, the roof is on. There's still we're pretty well into that project. There will be some modifications or alterations made to the Rocky Knoll campus, the 93 building, uh, primarily to provide for the facility to have two separate populations there, and that's underway. Uh, one of the things we've had, and almost any con contractor in town will recognize that the weather hasn't helped us much. It's been wet. <laughs> Every time we go out there, we have to dewater the site. And there's also mo some modifications being undertaken at the Sunny Ridge Nursing Home, and that's to accommodate uh, those residents who are afflicted with Alzheimer's. We provide a courtyard at the north side of the building. We're also going to upgrade the facility itself by providing more modern air conditioning units for the building. Uh, and we're going through with a project to provide fire sprinklers throughout the building, which it had not had before. Over a $9 million uh, improvement to those two facilities to consolidate our, our health care centers. <coughs> Well, the county's cost is around $9 million, although Chairman Lemming, who at one told, time told me that I had to stay within or under $900. And I, I, didn't think I, I didn't think we were going to talk a lot about numbers today. <laughs> 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 so uh, don't quote me on the numbers too closely there. <laughs> but, but, <laughs> but moving on from uh, the major improvements that are being made at Rocky Knoll and Sunny Ridge to uh, a less expensive project, uh, Perhaps some viewers have noticed of late some men dangling from the courthouse. <laughs> What's going on there? Uh, we have a contractor out of Elkhart Lake, WW Masonry Restoration, who is, is cleaning the courthouse. If you'd notice uh, over time uh, that beautiful Indiana limestone that the courthouse is constructed of will gather dirt and dust and grime. Now, at one time when the rice coal yards were across the river, it was more often. But, and that's exactly what they're doing. They're going through and water blasting it to clean it up, and the effect is remarkable. You can see exactly where they've been and where they haven't yet. And then they will follow that up with tuck pointing and repair and window glazing and you know, building maintenance. That's part of the part of the program. Now, earlier the chairman asked how many staff you had in your department. I think you said 34. 34. 34 staff and. Um, I, I think our viewer, viewers have uh, picked up on the fact that our staff are not the ones doing all this work, that you're in many instances overseeing it or leading the project implementation, but we contract with people. How does that process work? Could you in a nutshell uh, share with how the bidding process is um, carried through? Yeah, as a need or requirement for a project or even a large piece of equipment or a modification of existing equipment, 
uh, arises and it's determined that this is something that's worth doing and should be done or needs to be done, uh, we would, in the case of a structure, uh, go to architectural firms and, for instance, the uh, nurse the new consolidation project, uh, we interviewed, we took responses from somewhere around 19 or 20 different architectural firms, interviewed at least a half a dozen of them, and from that selected a firm who working with probably a consultant could come up with the design development of what would suit the county's purposes. And once that selection is made, then by working with those architects in developing a program for we need so many rooms, we need such and such mechanical system, they would develop the documents that specifications for it and the county is bound to operate within the state purchasing guidelines. So those specifications have to be developed, advertised for bids, bids received, bids evaluated, and then awarded to a successful contractor. And my final question before turning it back to the chairman, throughout that process, you're working with the property committee, the finance committee, a building committee. How are those decisions arrived at in terms of what bid is going to be selected? Well, quite often, a project is determined, you know, the authority for the project is determined by the unit that it's in. For instance, health care would be the health care committee. Uh, buildings at the courthouse and so forth would be the property committee. Uh, buildings at the ag building or the extension building would be that committee. And if it's a large enough project, then sometimes the county board will appoint or establish an ad hoc committee which is made up of members for that purpose. But all these uh, projects then are referred through a committee to a committee for their approval. And then that committee, if it's an ad hoc committee or a standing committee, will remain with that project until completion and oversee its function. Very good. Thank you. Vern, before we started taping, we were joking around a little bit about uh, if we had air conditioning in our five-year capital plan for, <laughs> for this building because it was getting a little warm in here with the lights on. But we are starting our, our pro budget process for 2002, and your involvement in that process is not only your own department's budget, but a lot of uh, future capital projects that you're involved with. Um, maybe you could talk a little bit about some of the projects that, that, are, that are on in the works for, for the next <laughs> three, four, five years. And, and, and not, not just the, the large projects, but even some of the smaller mm -hmm. ones. Well, some of the things that are, we're trying to accomplish within you know, the Building Services Department, of course, is to make more of the building structures, facilities that we have more efficient. Uh, those of us uh, who were hit with uh, the rise in fuel prices this winter recognized, hey, that's not a bad idea. Let's see what we can do with that. And one of the things we're undertaking right now is to reapply what technology is available now to, for instance, the courthouse air conditioning system. We, <laughs> the courthouse in 1933, of course, its air conditioning system was open windows. Uh, we did provide air conditioning of a sort with it, at, which was technology feasible at the time, but it's not the most efficient. Uh, the courtrooms, of course, are on another separate system, which again is wearing out and getting old. So those type of things in the energy management field where there are software-driven programs that can be provided that give you much more efficiency. Uh, we have a couple other projects going on. One of them is an investigation of the role the university campus is playing you know, here in Sheboygan County. Uh, the campus has seen a tremendous increase in its ability or in its serving of the public, both in uh, traditional students, non-traditional students, community programs, uh, and we're looking at a 
far-reaching or a comprehensive plan that looks out over several years of what should we do here at the university campus to make this a better functioning unit. And right now we're engaged with an architect, local architect in town, uh, to try to develop those plans to make sure that what we do you know, is something that's not going to come back five years from now and say, gee, we should have. And I hope we're doing it well. So you don't want to mention any specific parts of that project <laughs> right now because it's well, in the early stages. It, it is in the very early stages, and it will be presented to the Finance okay. Committee shortly. Uh, one of the things we're looking at, of course, is the infrastructure. You mentioned the air conditioning. Uh, there are some improvements that could be made here. Uh, another thing is to take the mechanical structure of the boiler room, that sort of thing, and see if there's something we can do to provide better units. For and there are a couple of state programs that may aid us in this, uh, energy conservation programs that we're also investigating. Uh, the other thing is to take a look at the requirement for additional classrooms and to do something with their science lab. Uh, the science lab facility is not up to date, to be frank. It, it's, in fact, in a lot of cases, it's not as good as some of the high schools in town. So those are the things we're looking at. I know that when you were describing the projects that you've worked on the last few years, I think you probably shortchanged your department a little bit. Uh, I know that when we moved a lot of the um, uh, people out to our detention center, uh, we did a lot of remodeling in the, in the original jail uh, next to the courthouse we, uh, for, the, for the juveniles mm -hmm. and, and a lot of remodeling there. When we built the administration building, we started, as you said, the domino effect, moving departments around. Every time we move a 20 or 30 person department, you don't do that for nothing, and, and, and there's some <laughs> remodeling involved. And so, so you maybe shortchanged your projects a little bit. Uh, we said we weren't going to talk about numbers, but I think in the last four or five years, we've been pretty much bonding for most of our projects in the neighborhood of eight, nine million dollars a year. Mm -hmm. and, and I know that the Finance Committee, myself, uh, many of the county board supervisors realize we can't continue bonding eight, nine million dollars a year uh, indefinitely because our debt service is, is really hurting our budgets. So, and, and I know the responsibility of deciding what gets done isn't, you bring us the technical information, you bring <laughs> us the numbers, and then the supervisors have to make the decision. So we, we really appreciate the, uh, the experience that you bring to, to county government uh, to prepare us to make those decisions. But uh, uh, just because something is in the planning stages doesn't mean that uh, uh, for our viewers that it's going to be implemented necessarily. We still have to come up with the money to, to do these projects. And Chairman, I'm well aware of that. And, and I've been in some of the meetings where right. we had to go through this. But you're, you're entirely right that um, my department will develop you know, the scope of a project. Uh, it's up to the county board and its committees to determine the need for it, and yeah. that's exactly yeah, what... The, the blame what, comes to the county board supervisors, <laughs> not, not to the department that, that sets us up. I try to put it that way. Right, right. Well, thank you, Vern. It's, it's really, uh, as we do these shows, I've been on the county board for 13 years, and I continue to be amazed at, at the depth of, of our departments and, and the work that they do. So I, I appreciate the show again this month. Uh, next month, for our viewers, we're going to have Chuck Mayer, the, uh, who runs our Sheboygan County Memorial Airport, and uh, I think one of the questions we're going to ask him next month is, uh, is what is the possibility of, in the future of being called Sheboygan County International Airport? And uh, it, it's, it's, it's not just a trick question, but something to keep in mind as you wait for our show next month. And uh, Chuck Mayer will be our guest, and thank you for watching.